Hey guys, what's happening? So, it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video, but uh, yeah, I definitely been busy, you know, doing stuff in the garage, designing stuff. Uh, I'm actually at work. I got a new CNC machine coming in. Uh, working on a CNC, uh, trying to buy a CNC lathe to, or trying to buy an old lathe to convert to CNC. Uh, but yeah, I actually designed this thing. It's a new extruder system based on like a BMG type extruder, Bontech BMG extruder. Um, also with the V6 hot end and uh, but yeah it follows the same design as my last extruder if you saw that um, you know with a three easy out screws so you could just remove three screws pulled out and uh, you know you could pull that thing out and I'll, I'll show you that in like after this I'll, I'll go in my garage and I'll show you the uh, how easy it is just to pull the thing out but yeah it's an ultra light design and the unique thing here is this this is a NEMA 14, like, micro-stepper, ultra-ultra-light. So the design of this thing is it's actually a lot smaller than it actually looks in this picture. It's pretty tiny. Uh, these are 40-millimeter cooling fans right here. This is actually cooling the, off the, uh, the hot end here. The, uh, I forgot what this is called, but um, the, the cooling fans for this. But, um, and then it has a 40-millimeter blow, blower fan. So I'm not 100%, I mean, I designed like this so I could change different uh, tips. So in case this didn't actually blow cool enough, then uh, I, I would change the tip to something else. But, I mean, you're not, you don't need a lot. I mean, I think a lot of people just overfan their their stuff. They have these crazy elaborate, like, duck works that just add actually weight. And you're not really gaining any benefit because the whole purpose of this is to solidify the plastic. And you only need this if you're pretty, like, PLA, PLI+, plus, maybe PETG. But you don't need to like overcool this part because the point is just to solidify the plastic when it comes down here. So, um, but I thought maybe I might design like a double ductwork where an airflow would come around the back and hit both sides of it. But like I said, all that's it just added weight, and you want lightweight. Lightweight when your extruder is lighter, lighter weight, you can print faster and you have less ghosting. So obviously, BL touch in the front here. Um, yeah, I, actually, I do have a one printer with an inductive sensor. But I definitely prefer the BL Touch. Um, oh yeah, it's based on a linear rail, as you can see in the picture here. And I designed a, remo a removable mount here. So if you have different printers, I'll design different mounts for it. Um, but this will also be really good for a Core XY, so you could really blow through it fast. You know, super ultra light extruder system. So like some of these, some of these uh, 3D printers have the linear rails on top. So I'll create a different one of that, and you then the belt latches here. And what else? Yeah, I just like to... I'll, I'll show you this after this. I'll go to the garage and I'll show you that the, my other existing extruder. But this one's even smaller and lighter. But, yeah, anytime you have a jam in here, it's a... I don't... Like, a lot of my... I'd actually... Before, I'd pre, I printed out other people's projects. And one of the issues I always had was that they were so elaborate with different fans and different ducts that it was a nightmare to get apart. You know, I had to take all these fans off and all the stuff apart. But, you know... Yeah, you know, I, I tried this design on my other one, and it worked perfect, you know, because whenever you get a jam in here, like, you will get jams in here no matter what. I mean, it's it just, that's just the way it is. So regardless of what extruder system I ever use, I always got jams. So not a lot, I mean, but it's it's a headache. You go out there, and you're eight hours into a print, and your thing stop extruding because it jammed, or your retraction settings are dialed in, or whatever. But yeah, just three screws, the whole thing separates. This part, the two parts separate, and you're out. This whole thing pops out. You can easily separate everything. Um, I don't know. I can't remember if I mentioned this, but I also have, like, the wire design. So all the wires will feed up to here and up and out. And there's little spots for zip ties. So you just wrap a little zip ties through there. But uh, all right, now it's got to print it out um, and test it. Yeah, the cool thing is I'm actually learning a lot more about Fusion 360, so I'm actually learning to you know, import parts, so I can really just check fitment, you know, make hole spacing, the fitment, you know, um, so it actually saves a lot of time, so I don't have to print out something, take a look at it, check to see for fitment, I'm actually doing more of this stuff in, in actually CAD here, um, versus just trying to print it out, kind of, you know, uh, eyeball everything, so, all right, guys, well, so I'm going to go to the garage, we'll check it out, cool. All right, so here is my existing design. So you can see the similarities in it, you know, um, 
but um, this one actually, uh, same thing, the three screws you could pop out. This is a BMG type extruder uh, and just pops right out. And they had double ducts and the cooling fan was in the back here. You know, the, the part cooling fan, which is coming off. But it was a blower fan in the back, if you can see that. But it kind of went around and went under there. Same thing, 40 millimeter cooling fan. Um, but this is a, the NEMA 14. I mean, look how tiny this thing is. Super, super tiny. Um, that's a NEMA 17 right there, my old printer bot. But what's interesting, though, too, is it will actually fit. I mean, if you just wanted to use a BMG extruder, you could actually, it will fit. I mean, the, the, the whole spacing. Uh, where is my, I have a BMG extruder in there somewhere with the uh, dual drive gears. So, uh, what I was saying is the whole spacing, I've actually had it mounted like that. And it actually will work. So if you just wanted to actually hook up a, if you were curious and you had a NEMA 14, you saw this online. And you were wondering if it would actually fit like the standard kind of layout of a NEMA 17. Well, the two screws do. You know, you'd have to put like a nut back here to keep the third one tight, which really is, you could probably get away with two screws, it doesn't matter, you know. But, uh, alright, so this is going to be the first video, um, but now i got to print it out. And uh, print it out, test it, we'll see if it works. You know, I'm going to keep on modifying until it does work, I mean it should work. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do my printer bot, you know, I, I'd much rather, it's way better, if you have small parts, it's better to print on a small printer. The quality is way better. Like, I only use that big printer for if I'm doing big stuff, because, you know, just all the, I'm kind of getting off track here, but all the jerk and motion and, uh, you know, this huge access, I mean, you can't control uh, ghosting. It's harder to control ghosting with a big printer. All right, but yeah, my old trusty printer bot had this thing forever. It's my first printer. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, probably maybe a couple weeks, maybe a week or two. I got other products going on, like I'm doing a CNC conversion, lathe conversion. Uh, a bunch of different stuff. I have a new CNC machine coming in week. I got to clean out space in my garage for that. Um, negotiating a CNC lathe or a CNC lathe conversion. I'll make videos about all this stuff. All right, cool. And my wife's AC went out in her car. <laughs> Busy guy. All right, awesome.